outro cast. Michael, Peter, Matt, a pleasure to be speaking with all three of you. We'll throw the first one at Peter. We'll say, how did this band come together? Because it's three people who have a lot of credits, who are very busy, and it's not every day that you have a band with three people who have a lot going on. Oh, first of all, thanks for having us. Um, yeah, we came together. It was one of those weird accidents in the universe. We we uh, were all a part of the Hedwig show on Broadway, uh, which a friend of ours wrote. And uh, Mike and I got to be in the band together um, as drummer and singer in this fictional band. And we, we were having a good time. And we became friends and we shared a lot of rides back home, back downtown from the theater and listened to a lot of music that we love, Bob Dylan and, and heavier stuff. And we just maintained our friendship. And Matt and I, Matt was also part of the production and we went on the Hedwig tour together and we had such a good time just hanging out all over the country. We got back to New York and we started making music, instrumental music, and just for fun. We were just having a, a good time and uh, we really enjoyed hanging out. and. One night, Mike heard a few of the jams we had been playing, and he noticed we didn't have any vocals and just casually was like, hey, if you guys ever need vocals on this, and we were like, yeah, and he uh, showed up and started singing on our jams, and there was no, even in the beginning, there was no thought of what we were doing or what it was heading towards, but we just kept doing that and, and getting great results. And that's kind of, we were paying attention and we just were like, holy shit, there's something here. And we just kept doing it and doing it. And that's been going on now for about five years. I mean, it right. kind of it happened to us more than we happened to it, you know. Right. Now, Michael, the first question I have is, I've, I've just heard you called Mike a few times. Is it a graduation yeah. level that once you get to know Michael C. Hall, you become Mike to them? Um, th there's no formal ceremony. <laughs> and uh, I never take issue with anybody calling me Mike, even if it's right away. It's sort of a dealer's choice. But yeah, you know, my mom calls me Mike. My wife calls me Mike. These guys call me Mike. You can call me Mike. Okay, well, Mike, as a follow-up to what I was just hearing from Peter, among your credits was Lazarus, which was famously Bowie's last situation his last major production i got to know henry hay a bit who worked on that as well now yeah. did you have to hide all these years that you were a singer musician because obviously when you take the subway in new york city for years and years we just saw your face but we didn't know right. hey that guy is a singer um i mean i wasn't actively hiding it <laughs> i just uh i i mean my first my first like big, big gig as an actor was uh, uh, playing the MC in Cabaret on Broadway. And so, you know, I did use the singing uh, as an actor in musicals and stuff like that. But yeah, as far as, as far as uh, singing in a band or in anything in that universe, it just never kind of went that way. Um, I think the first really legitimate band that I ever got the front was the band in Hedwig, which, um, gave me a sense of what that felt like and uh sort of was a, like a boot camp in doing that um every night for for several months and um but yeah i mean it's something i i've always i've always uh i mean i've taken breaks from it but i've always done a good amount of singing um i just never uh never did it uh in this context you know and 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 you know, because I'm not really uh, an instrumentalist or whatever. I, I mean, there are plenty of people who front bands who don't play an instrument, but I just never, I never uh, thought it was in the cards. You know, I mean, I, I guess I, or, but it was in the cards. It just didn't get dealt until later. <laughs> right. Well, Matt, not to leave you out of this. Uh, your credits <clears throat> also impressive because besides Hedwig, besides Princess Goes, they include Blondie, Cindy Lauper, etc. Now, are you primarily a keyboardist, or did you default become the keyboardist? Um, yeah, I would say it felt like a default, but now I'm not sure. I just sort of 
exist in the nether regions, really, wherever those are. Um, <laughs> I started on keyboard, and then uh, I was like, man, I want to rock. I want to play guitar, man. <clears throat> well, and um, and then I, I gradually came back to keyboard. And that's, but, you know, I played bass in Princess a lot. And um, guitar. And guitar. You know, Pete, Peter was like, just pick up that bass, man. It's so, it's so fun. It was right. When you say that you wanted to rock, now where did that start? Because I find that if you're, let's say you're over the age of 40, like myself, it was Van Halen and Kiss. And then if you were under 40, but 32 to 40, it was probably Nirvana. And then 32 to this is Green Day. Where does the rocking start for you? Right, exactly. I, I sort of in between, I was like, um, you know, the hair metal, like Headbangers Ball, MTV, you know, Poison, Guns N' Roses, Metallica, all that stuff. I saw Billy Idol last night in Brooklyn, and that guy rocks. Man, Steve Stevens on guitar. Wow. Steve Schneider on guitar. Schneider, exactly. Steve Stevens, <laughs> A. Schneider. See? <laughs> yeah. Um when, when when you're Jewish, you're growing up going, oh, man, I wish I were cool like these people. And then you realize that everybody's secretly Jewish and hair metal, but that's not the point. Uh, the point is that your musical influences have that rock end. But then also when we watch the videos of Princess Go, I hear, coincidentally, I'm wearing a Peter Hook shirt, not planned, but I hear more of a New Order kind of influence. Does that come more from Mike? I don't know. Yeah, we all we all have that love of that Manchester scene, and um, you know, but that's cool that you hear that. You know, are you saying on the new videos that you've seen, or just in general, like between Blur and really all the videos? I hear a. It's the kind of thing where I don't consider New Order dance music. I consider it well produced, layered poppy yet meaningful stuff that can be on in the background yet you can hear all the meaning in that if that description kind of makes any sense but i do hear the manchester sound uh so that is also an influence besides hair metal absolutely yeah i think you know coming up in the late 90s in new york in the early 2000s there was the massive resurgence of the manchester sound with joy division and you know, carlos d would always BFA, yeah be djing Joy Division and New Order and clubs, and people would be dancing to those songs. So I think that also affected certainly my my DNA. I mean, because um, yeah, like you said, growing up listening to Joy Division is one thing, but then going to a club and people are actually dancing to it, it's like, oh, this is really, you know, this music is vibrant and alive. Sure. Now, throwing it back to Mike here, looking at the upcoming tour dates, there's a gig in Brooklyn next week. Then there's Manchester, which we were just talking about, and Germany, the Netherlands, and Belgium. When did you realize, hey, I don't want this to just be a studio project, but I want to take this on the road with Princess Goes? I mean, it's it's like Peter said. I mean, I think we just keep showing up and, and, and hopefully... Uh, people show up where we show up <laughs> you know it's like we, we we played that first gig because we we found that we'd written some songs and um, wanted to share them beyond just that room that Peter and Matt are in and um, yeah we we found people to help us out to book us some gigs we got uh, hooked up with a with a with a booking agent over there who who's been able to line stuff up for us um, this is the second time we've gone over there and um, you know we we we're excited about the music. We believe in it, and um, if, if if there are people to help us uh, line up uh, the chance to play, we'll play anywhere. You know, and um, and I do feel like you know fans fans over in the UK and and Europe more broadly are are, are really really great. There's a real love of live music there. Um, a lot of great you know small clubs and. Um, and I mean, it's a it's an amazing thing to go and share something that's so sort of personal and intimate with a room full of strangers in a totally strange place. Um, it's a it's a beautiful feeling. And um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there 
we I don't think we ever have sat down and said, um, okay, what next or what's our what's our uh, what's our target? You know, what's it's just um, we've just sort of been able to continue to show up for it as it's evolved and um, yeah, yeah. It, it's very impressive the venues that you're playing in the UK. These are not just little tiny clubs. These are respectable, great venues. So when you have a gig at the Manchester Academy or the Globe or the O2 Institute, that kind of a thing, what should we expect? And I don't know if this question goes to Peter, but what should we expect? Because a lot of bands go, well, we just have one or two albums. So you're going to hear most of those two albums in a cover. In this case, is it like a 60 minute show, a 90 minute show? Any idea? Yeah, this tour, uh, I think we're scheduled to do 90 minutes. And uh, yeah, you know, what to expect. We we like to, you know, build on what we do in here live and, and see where we can take it. You know, I I think a lot of, uh, you know, we have different sides of the band. We like to cross genres on our records. And so I think our shows hopefully are curated where we can kind of pay respect to all the the styles that we like. And, uh, you know, I don't know, our audience has been, audiences all around here in the States and over there have been really lovely and just receptive. So it's kind of a love fest vibe, you know, I don't know. It just, it feels like, I don't know. We, we seem to really take a lot of energy from it. So yeah, just that exchange of energy. We hope it it's always there and we just hope we keep making new fans. Cool. Now, follow-up question to you. Your credits include Morning Wood. There was two Morning Woods. There was the one that was on Capitol Records, and then there was the one we mentioned hair metal before. There was one that TNT singer Tony Harnell had. Which Morning Wood were you part of? Oh, that was most definitely the Capitol Records one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> never heard of this other Morning Wood. I've never heard of it either, but you know, I know there were a couple morning woods when we first started. There was one in Austin, Texas. I think it was oh. an all girl band, an all girl band that, you know, we honestly had to reach out to them and pay them to change their name because once we got to Capitol, we you, we had to solve, you know, figure that out. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's you know, it's a great name. I mean, it was kind of a double edged name for us. It was a, it fit what we felt like was our vision, but it also sort of I think allowed people to not take us seriously all the time, you know, and maybe it also even steered the, the course of our music a little bit in what we, what our songs were about in, in a way that wasn't really necessary because we really just wanted to rock and, <clears throat> but whatever, it was a great time. What did the uh, other band change their name to? Oh yeah, good one. Uh, AM Boner. <laughs> I, I would imagine they do the more <laughs> USA. You, you know that, right. that UK bands thing, how they're the charlatans everywhere in the world. Oh, and right. The okay. world is UK in the States. Yeah. Morning with UK. <laughs> well, it's Morning Glory over there, right? That's what they call Morning Wood. It's Morning Glory. And then, yeah, we found out all these other words for Morning Wood all over the, the world. There is a different word in every language for it. So, Matt, a random question for you here. Being that you've worked with Blondie for so long, I recently had the pleasure of interviewing Glenn Matlock. Is there a nicer person that you don't think would be a nice person than Glenn Matlock? Um, he is, yeah, he, he shocks. He shocks your perceptions because you think he's going to be this snotty, loud, brash, bratty punk. And then he shows up and he's got like, you know, this little tea and he's sort of offering you, you know, some tea and dressed in a nice three piece um, professor suit. Yeah, we call him the <clears throat> spider professor. Is that his whole vibe? Well, uh, I think that that reminds me of how in in movies, wrestling, MMA, the people that come across as being the mean people on screen are generally the most relaxed people because they have nothing to prove. So, Mike, is it different for you, your approach in singing where nobody's expecting you to be a certain way that you can finally express yourself and be yourself in Francisco's? Um, yeah, I guess, I, I, you know, as an actor, you're, 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 um, interpreting and doing your best to embody someone else's, um, 
words and uh in this case it's it's my Your words, words and our music and so yeah. so it's it's yeah it's very different um and there's a freedom in that and a uh there's something about the experience of performing that that's more um immediate uh less filtered you know you know sort of like revealing yourself through something else you're just like here it is um though you know when we get to the point where we're playing our song, songs live i mean sometimes in the midst of the song I'll be like, man i love this song who wrote this song oh it was, we wrote this song you know it's it's sort of once you start to give it away it, it doesn't belong to you in the same way you know you're just kind of like allowing it to you're the yeah you're the thing it goes through Right. Uh, well, I, I guess I mean, like, ultimately, you know, it doesn't feel that different. Like, if you really own the words you're saying as an actor or really, oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no, I do know what you're saying right there, because the script is given to you unless you were a writer, producer, director, or, or on a set where they let you improvise freely and change things up. In this case, this is your art. These are your words. But... The second you hear people singing them back at you, you go, wait, are these mine? Not necessarily no. because they can sing it back. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. My, my last question is going to go to all three of you. Uh, and one at a time, we'll start with Peter on this. Come of Age is the new record and it's out in a couple of weeks. I assume there was no influence by Damn Yankees Coming of Age, but Come of Age is the record. When a lot of artists finish a new record, they go, I am done with writing. I'm not going to write anything else. And other artists go, well, no, we have leftovers. I write every day, et cetera. So for you, <clears throat> when do you think the next album will be? Will there be another album? Will there be an EP? Or are you just one album, one release at a time? Good question. Yeah, we're... Um... I mean, we're definitely hoping that there's another round, but, you know, you never know what with anything, you know, unless it's right in front of you. Um, so, yeah, we have high hopes to just keep making music and riding this wave of creativity together as long as we can, you know, as long as everyone feels like we have something to say. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting. You know, we 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 have been writing nonstop, you know, for the last five years. I think this last year we've kind of taken a little bit of a break to get this record together and finish it and get it all, all the art and videos going. So it'll be interesting when we pick it back up that, and we're, we're more in like a getting ready to perform mode. So it's a different headspace. And, um, but, you know, I think going into perform mode and playing these shows this year and maybe even for the next couple of years, like we'll probably learn something about where we want to go for the next record. And, and maybe we'll get some inspiration that we won't even realize on the road or just at these shows of what kind of music, you know, is in us for the next round, whether it's like, you know, we have a very quiet side of the band where we can do, you know, really mellow acoustic -y stuff. And we have a lot of ideas sitting in this computer here that, that speak to that. And we also have a heavy, heavier side that we, touch on on some of our records but you know we all love to rock and you know you know i was just saying we at the beginning of the pandemic we had uh booked some time at uh the uh ranch the famous rancho de la luna in the palm desert with dave catching the the desert oh, yeah. rock we were going to go do a week with him and we had to cancel it because of covid and we would love to revisit that someday and that that would have been a whole different thing for us and i think i think we're not we've we've played a lot of our music in this room and recorded it and rehearsed in this room but i feel like we're look you know that's one of the reasons we shortened our name we want princess to be able to go anywhere musically physically we might make a studio album with a different producer next time rather than self-producing which we've done on our first three records i don't know that we we don't know but we're gonna go for it and we're gonna see what 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 is what is available before us, you know? And by the way, I love that you're another Owitz. I got to just shout out to the Owitzes. Um, that's really fucking cool. Uh, and well, Gwyneth Paltrow was a Paltrowitz, uh, I think until the grandfather, and then they took off the, you know, 
the it's and you know goop happens but anyway uh oh, do you nice. mentioned rancho that's in el paso right no that's uh sonic ranch rancho de la luna is in the palm desert i think it's oh, in so in california <laughs> yeah well kind of like the desert rock scene you know you know kaya catching Dave catching whole, yeah queens of the stone age Dave catching but eagles of death metal, death metal yes all the josh homie adjacent kind of stuff and yes yeah. uh, matt does that answer from peter reflect where your head is at as well that it's take it as it comes we're writing a lot we're inspired we'll see where it is it, it is all going and the princess goes short in version of the name was a smart move or did i create dissension <laughs> absolutely absolutely i mean princess wants to go um where where are you located by the way long beach long island new york any of you ever been here uh, yeah, yeah yeah fuck yeah yeah like every Everybody. This is one of those towns where all the bands hang out, but no one tells one another that they're here. So like when I'm talking to Albert Hammond Jr., he's like, oh, yeah, my my wife was an au pair there. And you're like, wait, what? Everything happens here, but no one wants to talk about it. But uh, yeah, anyway, as we were saying, Matt. It's the hmm. secret fulcrum of the New York music scene. It's Long Island, Long, Long Beach, Long Island. No, no one tells anyone they're from Long Island. They just say from New York City. Mm -hmm. It happens. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's like I went to school in Boston, sort of, it's not like that. It's in the neighborhood. <clears throat> Jason, Jason. Yeah, um, I think we have a lot of material and I'm excited to work on it. And as Peter once said, he feels happier when he's working on a new song or some new music or something. And I think that's true for me too. I feel really good when I'm feeling creative, especially with this band, because we're, mm -hmm. you know, we, we're not, um, yeah, there's nothing really stifling going on. So, so it's pretty exciting, you know, to, to mine the material that's there and look toward the future, all the new things that can happen. Cool. And the last word goes to you, Mike, because I graduated that I can call you Mike and not just Michael. Uh, yeah. More to come. Well, can I call oh, you Dare? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely think there's more to come. There's more there to be, you know, there, there, there are already things in different, different states of realization or completion. And um, like Peter said, there are different sort of aspects of what we've been up to that maybe would lend themselves to different releases, but, um, yeah, I don't know exactly what form it'll take, but but uh, yeah, and there's not yeah, there's nothing better than than feeling like you're on the case of some new thing, you know, writing. It's like a being in a flow state, you know. <laughs> well said. Well, congratulations on come of age. I mean, congratulations in advance because it's still out in a couple of weeks. But big tour ahead. Really looking forward to everything that's to come from all of you. And thank you for your time today. Thank, thank you, you so too. Much. Outro cast. <laughs>